In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the overheating bunk room. Now, if you've got an RV with a bunk room, then you probably know what I'm talking about. It's where that bunk room gets too hot in the summertime because it's not getting enough cool or conditioned air from your RV's air conditioner. But then you go to the winter months when it's colder outside and you're running your furnace and it overheats because it's getting too much hot air coming from your furnace. So it's kind of a double whammy. It overheats in the summer months when it's warmer outside, and then it overheats again in the winter months when it's cooler outside. Now, how can this be, you might ask? Well, in an RV, your primary source of heat is going to be your furnace, which has its own set of ducts in the floor typically, and then your primary source of cooling is going to be your air conditioner, which has its own set of ducts in the ceiling. And so if you've got a bunk room in your RV, pretty much every brand, every manufacturer is going to incorporate at least one heat duct in there, and then also a single cooling duct. And the problem lies in the fact that air typically wants to take the path of least resistance. So let's just talk cooling first for a minute. So you know that your RV's air conditioner is on the roof, and that means all the ducts from the cooling are hidden up in the ceiling, just like this one here, except for a duct feeding a bunk room, as in the case of this mid bunk, where you've got this loft space up here, right? Where this floor is actually the ceiling for the bunk room below. And so in that case, RV manufacturers typically will hide a duct. In this case, it's right here in this cabinet, kind of like a chase. And so they'll go from the ducts in the ceiling and then go down to the mid bunk room below. So imagine for just a minute, if you were an air molecule, would you rather escape through one of these ducts in the ceiling, kind of a straight shot, or would you rather go take a 90 degree turn and go down several feet and escape down through another duct in the mid bunk room? And that's precisely the problem. The bunk room is not getting enough airflow. It's not getting enough cool air. The rest of your RV is cooling down at a much faster rate because it has sufficient airflow. But then here in the bunk room, it's cooling down at a much slower rate because it doesn't have adequate airflow. And so the thermostat reaches the desired temp, the air conditioner shuts off, and maybe it's a comfortable 70 degrees in the rest of your RV, but then it might be 74 degrees here in the bunk room. And then to complicate things further, if you've got your door shut, maybe you've got sleeping kids in there, it exacerbates the problem even more. And so on the cooling side, the solution is to increase the amount of airflow, the cool air that's going into the bunk room. Now, what you're looking at here is the solution that I came up with. And before this, there was just a tiny four inch round circular register, just like you've got out here. Same thing was here in the bunk room. And so remember that tiny round four inch register is connected to a small four inch duct that ran up above to the ceiling ducts above and connected. So it's already taking a 90 degree turn and then it's still being squeezed through a tiny four inch round duct. So what you're looking at here is a much larger register. It's actually basically a return grill for a whisper quiet system. I wanted something that looked nice, that looked like it belonged and had a nice factory finish. I also needed something that was low profile because I've got this slide here that comes in and I didn't want something sticking down that it would get caught up on. But basically this opening that I enlarged it to is four inches by 10 inches. And then I hooked that up to a six inch round duct and fed that to the ductworks above. Now, if you Google the difference in CFM, that's just an airflow measurement basically between a four inch duct and a six inch duct, it's arguably triple if not quadruple the difference. And so I can get triple if not quadruple the amount of airflow through this six inch duct and boot that's coming out of this four by 10 opening compared to the original four inch round register that was in here from the factory. And doing all that was definitely easier said than done. I mean, I had to crawl up here in this loft space and then gain access to this chase right here by using the inside trim panel. Now I'll throw a bunch of pictures up of what it looked like in progress. But essentially, I had to figure out a way to transition from the foam duct material that RVs use in the ceiling. That's really the most common. I had to transition from that foam duct to a six inch airtight takeoff. And the way I did that is an airtight takeoff is airtight, it's got adhesive on it, but you have to clamp it down to something on the other side. So obviously sheet metal screws are not gonna clamp down into foam. And so I had to make kind of my own ring out of sheet metal to go on the inside 
layer of the foam duckboard that was already in the ceiling and that way I kind of made a sandwich with the airtight takeoff and then the next step was to enlarge the opening in the bunk room ceiling below to accommodate a much larger register now I settled on a 4x10 boot and of course that adopts to a 6 inch round duct and I just used some foil tape to kind of seal that to the ceiling to make sure it was also airtight and then really the easiest part of this all was just connecting that six inch airtight takeoff from the duct above and the ceiling to the new boot down below. And I just used six inch flex duct, made sure it was clamped at the top and zip tied at the bottom connection to make sure those are also airtight. And remember, we're going from a four inch round duct to a six inch round duct, which is arguably tripling, if not quadrupling the potential airflow that's coming out here to this final trim, this register here. And like I said, I chose this because I wanted something that blended in, that didn't stand out. And this is really exactly the same register that's over here on this whisper quiet system being used as a return except here in the bunk room, I'm using it as a supply for the cool air to come out of. And so by making all those changes, we're increasing the airflow here in the bunk room. We're letting more cool air pour out of that register and fill the bunk room. And I'm finding that even with the door shut, that this bunk room now tracks within one or two degrees of the rest of the RV. And that's in the heat of the summer months with the air conditioning running. So that's pretty good, right? I mean, before, with that little tiny four inch round duct, sometimes this bunk room would be four, five, six degrees warmer than the rest of the RV. Now, speaking of tracking temperatures, if you're wondering how I do that, if you've got the Pinnacle or the North Point, of course, you know the BM Pro system, you can add these little smart temperature sensors and they will integrate into the BM Pro system, which is super convenient because then you can see that on your phone or on the display. But you can also use something like this as a third party solution, a sensor push and it basically reads in the temperature and the humidity, and you can get that on your phone as well. And the range is really good. It's a lot longer than the typical Bluetooth range. All right, so we solved the cooling side of the problem, but what about the heating side of the problem when the bunk room gets too hot in the cooler months when the furnace starts running? And folks, I'm talking about having a temperature set at maybe 68 degrees in the rest of your RV, and then in the bunk room when that furnace kicks on it gets up to 76 or 78 degrees we're talking an 8 to 10 degree difference here in the bunk room and the problem lies primarily in the location of the furnace in relation to the bunk room so you can see we're on the outside of the fifth wheel now on the driver's side and here is my furnace and then you can see right next to it there is the slide box for the bunk room and that means the furnace the source of all the heat is on the opposite side of this bunk room wall here now the way manufacturers typically plumb the furnace is they'll create a trunk line underneath the floor here so just imagine a rectangular metal duct that starts here and goes in a straight line right under the floor and you can see it picks up all these other ducts going all the way back to the rear of your RV. And the problem is, again, air typically wants to take the path of least resistance. And so imagine behind this wall, you've got your furnace, some 35, 40,000 BTUs of heat, and here is its first pit stop potentially. So pretend like you're an air molecule. Are you gonna wanna escape through the path of least resistance here in the bunk room, or are you gonna hang on for the journey and escape through one of these other registers further down the trunk line, right? And that's why it gets so hot here in the bunk room because you've got this one register that's almost directly off of the furnace pumping all that hot air into the bunk room. Not to mention potential radiant heat that's maybe even coming off of this wall here or even the radiant heat coming off of the trunk line that's running directly underneath the floor. And again, folks, I'm talking about an eight to 10 degree temperature difference between here in the bunk room and the rest of your RV. So the solution may seem obvious. I mean, why don't you just replace this open register register here with a louvered version and then you can kind of close it off and dampen the amount of heat in the room right and that's typically what I've done on past RVs is I just put louvered registers in place of the open ones and that solves the problem but here in my pinnacle I had a really difficult time finding any louvered registers that were the right size and the right look you know I probably bought about three or four to sample some of them had plastic louvers that would kind of bow or flex under the intensity of the heat so those didn't work and then others were metal, but they were of color such that when you walk into the room, you know, it was kind of the first thing that your eye is drawn to. 
And my personal preferences with floor registers, you know, I want something that kind of blends into the rest of the decor so that when you walk into the room, it's not the big thing that your eye is drawn to immediately. And you know, I got to applaud Jayco because they did a great job sourcing the color of these registers. You know, it's kind of a seemingly insignificant detail, the color of the registers and the style, but they picked a really great choice. It's kind of a light gray color and it blends really nicely with this floor to the extent that you really don't notice that they're there. And so I decided I wanted to keep these floor registers, but I still needed to come up with a solution to block off some of that heat going into the bunk room. Now the solution I came up with is really quite simple. We're back here in the bunk room and here are some close up views of what that register looks like after the modifications have been made. And as you can tell, it really looks the same as all the other registers in the rest of the RV. But let me take it apart so you can see what's different. All right, so as you can see, all I've done here is created kind of a U-shaped baffle made out of sheet metal that blocks off most of the hot air. Now you might be looking at this thinking, wow, you're blocking off that much air. I mean, you just got a little bit of an opening up here and then another one down here. And yeah, that's what actually balances this room. That's how much airflow before this modification was coming through and heating up this room, causing such a great temperature difference. Now there's a few things I really like about this modification. First off, the cost. I mean, it's super cheap, right? Just a piece of sheet metal, a couple bucks, and you just have to bend it and shape it to fit the profile of the inside of your register. And in my case, it's just a really tight fit and that keeps it sandwiched in between the sidewalls here and the register opening. I also like visually, I mean, it's already sheet metal in here that you're looking at through the grate. So you're not changing anything visual. You're still seeing sheet metal. It's just at a slightly different vantage point. So I really like that when all is said and done, it looks very much original, clean, and simple. And in my situation here, my fifth wheel, I only had to do that same modification to one other register to kind of balance the heating system. And that is here in the bathroom on the upper deck. And it's kind of the same story. It's the first register off of the trunk line just go in the opposite direction. And what I found was when the furnace would kick on, just tons of hot air would fill the bathroom. And again, it'd be, you know, three, four, five degrees difference. Meanwhile, you've got the bedroom where you're more concerned about staying warm. And it would always be a lot cooler because all that hot air was going into the bathroom. Plus, you know, factor in that in the bedroom here, which is in the front nose of the fifth wheel, the floor isn't as thick. So the R value, the insulation isn't as good. So it's even cooler to begin with. So by completing that modification here in the bathroom on this register, I was then able to force some of the air that was coming out of here into this register in the bedroom. So now it's very balanced and very even throughout the fifth wheel. Now we'll show you close-ups of this register in the bathroom because I did not cut off quite as much air as I did in the, the bunk room. You can see it's more like three-fourths. And so I cut it about right here and about right here on both sides. And hopefully you can see that in the video. But basically you just have to kind of through trial and error figure out how much to block off with that same U-shaped channel cut out of sheet metal. Again, here in the bunk room, I cut off almost all the airflow. I mean, I left probably about a quarter inch on either side of airflow, and that's still enough to get plenty of heat here in the bunk room. Whereas here in the bathroom, I left probably about an inch on either side for air, and that seems to be balanced here up in the bathroom. So again, just like the alterations that I made to the cooling system on the heating system, cutting out that air supply and restricting how much air was going into the bunk room and the bathroom balanced out the overall airflow and all the other registers such that now all the rooms track within one or two degrees of each other when the furnace is running. And that makes it a whole lot more comfortable while you're camping. Now I got one other interesting question that I want to bring up and talk about, and that is why don't RV manufacturers do this balancing on the heating and cooling systems at the factory before the RV gets to you, the customer, right? I mean, why don't when RV manufacturers prototype and build out a new floor plan, why don't they factor in some extra time and budget to make sure the heating and cooling system is balanced so that it's within one or two degrees of each room in the RV, right? I mean, I think that's a fair question, but think about this. How many homes have you lived in? And I'm talking about maybe nice custom homes, expensive homes where you bought and moved into and then you discover there's a hot spot or a cold spot, right? Depending on the season, maybe one room gets warmer or hotter than the others. 
and it's uncomfortable, right? I guess the point I'm trying to make is I kind of get and understand why RV manufacturers don't balance the heating and cooling systems before it gets to every customer. And really it's an expectation thing. I mean, if this problem is occurring in homes, the majority of homes that are built today, then it's no surprise that the same problem is occurring in an RV because it's just a tiny home essentially that's being built. Now, maybe if you're buying a half million dollar plus class A unit, maybe then at that price point, it's reasonable to expect the manufacturer to balance the heating and cooling systems. But I think for most of us, it's just something that we've got to do for ourselves. You know, this is my fifth RV and every RV I've ever owned, I've had to make some kind of adjustment, even if it's minor to the heating and cooling system for it to be balanced. But hopefully in today's video, you've got some ideas, some solutions to some of the common problems with the heating and cooling system that you can try out on your RV. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. You know, every RV is different. And so what are some of the heating and cooling challenges that you've encountered as far as balancing the temperature across different rooms in your RV and how did you solve them? I would love to hear those solutions and I think it'd be incredibly helpful to the rest of the community. So definitely let us know in the comments below. But as always, thanks for watching.